السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد ولا إله إلا الله أشهد ولا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله إلى الصلاة إلى الصلاة إلى الفلاح إلى الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحتل الله فلا مدل الله ومن يدلل فلا هادي له أشر ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشر أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا إلى الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء واتق الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان لكم رقيبا يا أي الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا صديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل احسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل ما يحدث في الاسلام بدع وكل ما يحدث ضلاله وكل ما يحدث في النار all praise to Allah we praise him and we extol him and we say after the salat al salam ان رسول الله وعلى آله وذرياته ومن تبع سنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد read the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah تبارك وتعالى and the finest guidance is that of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the most evil of affairs are the newly invented ones bid'a every innovation in Islam is going astray and every bid'a leads to the hellfire نسل العافية وثباد today my dear brother Salam Iman I would like to speak about the power and the possibilities of our minds. Billahi tawfiq. Or Allah Azza wa Jalla lies our success. And while doing so, I would like to touch on the fact that the majority of people will be close to their death before ever realizing their potential in life. This is the fact and reality that the majority of mankind will be close to dying before they ever realize the potential that they had in their lives. So let me start by mentioning that we all know how the world is becoming more and more technologically advanced under the guise that they want to make our life easier. They want to make our life easier so people can relax, be less stressed, and at times, just as they say, kill time. 
in actuality waste our precious lives away. Aside from that, how many of us know a person who had a very high level of intelligence or displayed some raw talent, but due to the fact that they wasted the majority of their time on social media has ended up as nothing. La hawla wa la quota illa billah. There's no might and there's no power except with Allah. Any of us can get lured into these new enticing advancements in life. But it's upon us as believers to realize that not everything that is glittering is gold. I have to remember that. <clears throat> and when I see these newly advancements and technological advancements in life, in social media, so as to bring the world together and so on and so forth, under whatever guise, I remember an old saying when I was young, they used to say, it was a popular saying, that the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Now we see that the majority of people, young and old, are wasting their precious minds on social media and entertainment under the guise that they want to be up to date. They want to be in the now. They want to know what's happening. Why is it that we have to spend so much time having to know what's going on a million miles away? Why do we have to know about those things? And on top of that, we're not even sure that that knowledge is true or that information is factual. So what do we do? It's something that is happening. We get it, we get it on our, our WhatsApp and we spread it. Remember the Masha of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Kafa bi mar kadiban and yet hadithu it's enough for a person to be considered as a liar that they spread every bit of information that they receive. So, my dear Brother what I want to remind us of today is that we, as believers, have to protect our intellects, our minds, from being ill-advised by the shaitan and his allies. A lot of us, we're running and we're rushing and we're doing everything that we can so that we can be technologically advanced or we can be up to date. As believers, we have to understand that this, this type of mindset is not going to only affect those people who are weak-minded, but it will affect every single one of us if we allow it to. Remember, and I always remind myself, and my friends, my family, what Allah says in Surah Nur, at number 20. Ya yaladina aminu. Khatim lil mu'mineen. O you who have attained faith, la tatabi khudwat al shaitan. We should not follow the footsteps of the shaitan. Waman yatabi khudwat al shaitan. Whoever, whosoever follows the footsteps of the shaitan, then verily he will only call us to that which is lewd and evil. And then Allah says, If it was not for the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, then none of us would have ever been purified. But verily Allah, Azawajal, He is the one who purifies whomsoever He wishes. And He is well aware of everything. Allah Akbar. So it's not due to our intelligence that we are saved from following the khudwat of shaitan. Let none of us be fooled into believing that we are so smart 
That's why we didn't get snared by the footsteps of the shaitan. We have to understand that the shaitan, he tempts. He tempts. And the shaitan, he will never directly tell us to do something which is haram. No. He has steps. The shaitan and his allies, they are masters at the power of suggestion. We have to realize that, my Iman. Why did they do this? To lure and entice us into that which is evil. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that, when he went on the Surah of Miraj, he said that, Hujabat Jannah, Hujabat Jannah, the hijab or the covering around the Jannah is makareh. Are those things which we dislike? Hujabat Nar, Bishahawat. And the hijab and the covering around the hell, Jahannam Nar, is the shahawat, us following our desires. So we have to understand, my dear Iman, as believers, Allah addressing the believers, Ya Ladina Amanu, La Tatabu Khudwat Shaitan. We should not follow, He did not say do not follow the Shaitan, but do not follow the footsteps of the shaitan. And the Salaf, they said that the shaitan, he will invite us to 99 doors of goodness so as to get us to fall through one door of sinning. Allahu Akbar. And they base this on the hadith, the authentic hadith in the Musaf Imam Ahmed in Hanbal and the third of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radhi anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallam, said, he said, beware of the small sins. That these, he said, we, be, we should beware of the small sins. Because the seemingly small sins, for verily they pile up on a man until they destroy him. Allah Azza wa Jal, he's mentioned to us in Surah Ibrahim regarding the shaitan. What the shaitan will say when the people end up in the hellfire. The shaitan will say, I did not have any power over you. Clearly, the shaitan will say, When the matter has been decided and people are in the jahannam, the shaitan, he will stand and say to the people, وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ I did not have any power over you. إِلْ أَنْ دَعُتُكُمْ فَسَجَبَتُمْ لِي Except that I called you and you responded to my call. فَلَا تُلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ So do not blame me. Don't blame me, but blame yourselves. I had no authority over you. Except that I called you and you responded to my call. As believers, Allah he always speaking to the believers. And the Salaf said, whenever you hear Allah say, Ya ilidina aminu, we should listen very closely. Allah says, Oh, you who believe, do not follow the shaitan. No, the khudwat is shaitan, the footsteps of the shaitan. Because he's only going to order us to do that which is evil. And disgusting. And if it was not for the mercy of Allah upon us, then none of us would have ever been purified. As believers, we have to remember Allah as Wajal to the best of our abilities. We cannot depend on our intelligence, believing that we're smart or we're tricky, because the shaitan is a hundred times more tricky than we'll ever be. We have to understand that. We must safeguard our minds from the shaitan. Or they say our hearts. Where is the seat of our intelligence? Where is it in our mind or is it in our hearts? We have to safeguard our hearts from the shaitanic whispers and his allies, his associates. It's a hadith. It's a Muslim. And the thought of Aisha, who said that one night, the Messenger of Allah was with me 
in my apartment. And he left the apartment in the middle of the night. And when he came back, he found the apprehension of jealousy. The Messiah of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Did you become jealous of me? The Messiah of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I said, I just left to make dua for those in the baqi, those Muslims in the graveyard. She said, Yeah, Messiah of Allah. Oh, Messiah of Allah, how can a woman like me not be jealous of a man like you? The Messiah of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, has your shaitan overtaken you? Then she asked Masha of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Is there a devil with me? Do I have a shaitan with me? The Masha of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yes. And Aisha asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Is a devil attached to everyone? The Masha of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yes. Then she asked the Masha of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Is there a shaitan attached to you? The Prophet ﷺ said, yes. But Allah Azawajal helped me over my shaitan, and he has become Muslim. Another narration on Thawr ibn Mas'ud, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, every human being has been assigned a jinn and an angel. An inspiration. A shaitanic inspiration and an angelic inspiration. Ibn Mas'ud, he asked the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, is this the same for you, O Messenger of Allah? The Prophet Wasallam he said, yes. Except that my jinn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped me, and my jinn became a Muslim, and he only tells me to do that which is good. So my dear Muslim Iman, from this, these ayats and this hadith, we have to understand as believers, it's only by the mercy of Allah Azza wa that any of us could ever be purified. But we cannot just depend on the mercy of Allah. We have to make an effort. We have to make an effort to purify ourselves, to better ourselves, put ourselves in a better situation, put ourselves with better company. Remember the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, al-mar'ma man yuhab, that the person will be with those whom they love. If we want to be with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his companions in paradise, then we have to associate ourselves in this life with good people. It is a duty upon us as believers to better ourselves and to look for better situations and to look for better company. And we cannot use the lame excuse that such and such a person that we know, or my friend, he became rich by doing such and such on Instagram. So if I just follow what they did, then eventually... I will be rich too. I will be famous too. We have to understand that this is not how it works. What might be good for somebody may not be good for me. As believers, we have to take our time and pray to Allah Azza wa Because a lot of youth have fallen into this seemingly problematic situation. If they only adapted to the prophetic sunnah, then this seemingly difficult situation of just following somebody's example in life and then will be successful like they became successful. Remember, what's good for somebody may be bad for us. So what is the solution to this seemingly problematic situation? Dua. And I don't mean that we should just make dua in general. No, there's specific duas that we have. The Prophet Islam, he told us, that we should pray Salat al-Stikhara. And this beautiful sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ has been perverted and corrupted by those people of bid'ah and innovation by advising people who have a decision to make about their lives, their wealth, and their well-being that they should look for somebody who is pious to make Stikhara for them. And then you wait and see if you see a dream. This is far from the truth. This is a bid'ah that they brought into this blessed sunnah. And it's very sad that most Muslims, they either don't understand what is istikhara, they do not know the du'a of Salat istikhara, or they adapt these innovative principles in Salat istikhara. The hadith on Jabr, 
bin Abdullah, narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu can you alimuna? He used to teach us. He used to teach us to pray the Salat al-Stikhara. How to do the Salat al-Stikhara for Amur Kullah. In all of our situations. As he would teach us a surah of the Quran. Due to what? The importance of Salat al-Stikhara. He said if any one of us had any issue. Ham, Fishe. Any issue. Then he said that we should pray. Two rakats, ghayr farida. Other than the obligatory prayers, two rakats. And then we should make the dua of sakhara. That is very simple, that we should memorize. We should have this dua memorized. And what is the meaning? The literal meaning of sakhara is that we seek the best from Allah in our lives, in all of our worldly affairs. In some narration, they said that the sahaba they would pray Salat al-Sakhara if they needed to buy a strap for their sandals. Allah Akbar. They wanted Allah's blessing in everything that they did. If any of us have any decision to make, let us be blessed. Not by just making a random dua, but praying Salat al-Sakhara. And then we'll know that we are blessed. May Allah Azza wa help all of us to make better decisions in our life. Amin, amin, amin. <coughs> Bismillah, salatu salam, ala rasulullah, wa ala alihi, wa sahibu man tabi huda, wa baad. Adiba salam iman. We all need to realize that life is all about choices. And if we are hopeful that we'll have a good end, bi'idhnillah, then we should never, ever follow popular opinion in the beliefs that these people or this is my friend they did this and this is their outcome we shouldn't do that because we are people who are striving to be believers Allah just says that we should have the consciousness of Allah to the best of our ability and we don't know what those people, our friends, did to achieve what they have in life. We don't know. But as believers, we have morals. We have integrity. And we don't just do whatever somebody tells us to do, and then they hide those other little things that they did. They hide the dirt, and they tell us what they should do, what you should do to achieve this. But they don't tell you about all of those things. A lot of youth are being tricked and bamboozled because they want to become an Instagram model. They want to be an overnight success. They'll do anything that they can to get likes and to become popular. Remember, my dear brother, Salam Niman, the catchphrase that I mentioned at the beginning of our khutbah, that the mind is a terrible thing to waste. We need to remind each other to protect ourselves from the khudwat of shaitan, the footsteps of the shaitan. Remember, there are awliya ar-Rahman and there's awliya shaitan There are friends of the most merciful and there are friends of shaitan. So we have to be careful, my dear Salam Iman. Allah he has reminded us in Surah Munafiqun, ayat number 9. Ya ilidina aminu. Again, O you who believe, O you who have attained faith, la tulhikum amwalikum wa la awladikum an dhikrillah. Do not allow your, your family or your wealth to distract us from the remembrance of Allah. And whosoever allows themselves to be distracted by our wealth or our families, then we are the ones who are lost in khasara. We are the ones who are destroyed. Iblis, Allah. He will not stop until he brings us all to the hellfire with him. Remember what he says. Ma kan ali min sultan. I did not have any authority over you. Except that he calls. And we responded to his call. Let us end off 
with his hadith, which is a Sahih Muslim, and the thought of Jabir ibn Abdullah, reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Iblis, he placed his throne upon water. And then he sends out his soldiers every night. Listen closely, my dear Salam Iman. Iblis, he placed his throne upon water, trying to make the, the methal with Allah. He tried to make the simile with Allah. Iblis places the throne upon water. And then he sends his soldiers out every night for the purpose of creating mischief. Another hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that this happens every night at, Salat, at the time of Maghrib. At the time of Maghrib. That's why we should bring in our children. What some said, we should bring in our children at sunset, at Maghrib time. Lock the doors and we should cover our pots in the name of Allah. If you cannot find anything to cover your pot, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even find a stick or, or a spoon to cover your pot. Cover the vessels in the name of Allah. Why? So that the shaitan will not tamper your stuff. So the shaitan will not put bad things into your food. You should lock your doors and cover your stuff in the name of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he went on to say in the hadith that the shayateen they spread out at night so as to create mischief in the land. And they go out. And one of them says, he comes back and reports to the shaitan. He said, I did such and such. He said, you did nothing. Another one comes back and reports to the shaitan. He said, I did not cease until I caused so and so to have problem with his wife until they separated. The shaitan, he brings, ah, he brings him close and he says, you are the one. And he puts the crown on him. From this, my dear Salam Iman, this hadith is Sahih Muslim. We have to understand that this is the highest goal of the shaitan. To make a problem, to create a problem between the family. Starting from the top, the husband and the wife. The husband and the wife. So my advice for myself and you all, if you're married, hold on to your relationships. Don't be so, don't allow petty things to come in between your wife or your spouse. Do not let petty things come in between you all. We know that each and every one of us has a shaitan, a company to us, and an angelic inspiration as a company with us. So whenever we hear an evil suggestion from the shaitan, we should try our best to change our thoughts. Change our thoughts from that. It's difficult. But what's going to help us remedy this difficulty? By saying, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim Simple. Simple as that. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed devil. May my dear Muslim man, that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. So may Allah help us and bless us to help us overcome our egos. Help us overcome those shaitanic inspirations and whispers and suggestions. Allah wa Jal help us against the adu, the ones that we see with our eyes, those who try and ill-advise us. May Allah wa Jal help us against our unseen enemy by always remembering him. Azawajal. Amin, amin, amin. In Allah wa Malaik you salu ala nabi. Ya ayyadina amanu. Salu ala muslim. Alhumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ni Muhammad. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا عاتني في الحسنة وفرخ سبقنا ذا من فقم صلاة